Hello and welcome to my mini series on railroad crossing safety for commercial motor vehicle drivers. But first, here is a list of all the vehicles that I'm currently able to drive with my commercial driver's license. Let's see, I have class A trucks, double and triple trailers, tanker trailers, and as soon as my updated CDL arrives in the mail, it'll also include city buses, coach buses, school buses, and even articulated buses. Now, the reason why I'm making this video series is because I've seen far too many trucks on YouTube, as well as buses, get hit by trains for various reasons, including, but not limited to, the crossing not activating in time, or an oversized vehicle hitting the top of a crossing device. So. I decided to make a comprehensive video series that will hopefully eliminate these types of accidents and more. In this video series, I'm going to cover a variety of railroad crossing devices and parts, including but not limited to the flashers, the crossing gates and gate motors, the uh, track number sign, the side lights, the cantilever the RXR sign, the skull and crossbones design, of which only one was built, the wigwag, the emergency contact information, the railroad crossing bells, the steep railroad crossing warning sign, the railroad crossing at a T intersection sign, and the railroad crossing at a divided highway sign. In this introductory part of the series, I'm going to cover crossbucks and some of the other signage around railroad crossings and what they mean. The first sign I'd like to talk about is the ATWS or Advanced Train Warning System. These are flashing amber lights on Advanced Railroad Crossing Warning Signs or as I like to call them RXR signs. These are sometimes used on sections of roadway where the railroad crossing itself would be hidden from view. When the lights are flashing it means the crossing is active and the train is approaching the crossing at this time. And when they aren't flashing, it means no train approaching at this time. This is the Railroad Crossing Advanced Warning Sign, or as I like to call them, the RXR sign. These signs are usually located 100 feet from the crossing, unless there's an intersection right in front of the crossing, then they're located on the opposite side of the intersection near the crossing. Man, how many times have I said crossing in this video? That's going to get old fast. Okay, the, there are actually other words for railroad crossing. In Canada, they're usually called railway crossings. You can also call them grade crossings. In Europe, they call them level crossings. There really aren't a lot of words for this word. Anyway, knowing how far this sign is from the railroad crossing can come in handy if you're driving a vehicle that's required to stop at railroad crossings because usually they tell you you're supposed to turn your four-way flashes on 100 feet from the crossing and turn them off after you've passed 100 feet from the crossing. So one easy way to remember where that is is turn your four-ways on as soon as you pass this sign and when you pass the sign in the, in the other side of the crossing, that's when you turn your four-ways off. Sometimes other signs with additional information will also be mounted onto the same pole, like for example in this case, a no train horn sign. This sign is warning you that you should exercise extreme caution when crossing this railroad crossing because the trains will not blow their horns at this crossing, be uh, usually because of a quiet zone and I'll cover that in a later video. This is a private railroad crossing sign. As its name implies, it means it is privately owned by an individual rather than by the railroad. Now, these private owners are usually pretty cheap, so rather than putting lights and bells at their crossing, they'll usually just settle for a simple sign to mark that it is a railroad crossing at that location. This is an emergency contact information sign. Others also refer to it as a DOT tag. In any case, these signs are very important if you ever get stalled on a railroad crossing. The first thing you should do is call the number on this sign, which will alert the railroad police of the railroad that owns this crossing. Tell them the number of the railroad crossing, 
this serial number will let them know exactly which railroad crossing on their system you're calling about and then tell them the nature of the emergency and probably your name as well. If you're lucky, they can actually contact the nearest driver and stop him before he gets to the crossing so you won't get hit. And then you'll have plenty of time to get a tow truck and whatever you need to do to get off the crossing. But if you're not lucky, then the nearest train will be too close and it'll hit you anyway. This is a steep grade warning sign. This sign is used to warn you that the grade at the railroad crossing is so steep that certain trailers might get hung on the tracks when you try to cross them and as a result you will get stuck. Me personally as a commercial driver I stare clear of these types of railroad crossings. Even if I think I might fit over it I don't want to run the risk of getting stuck on it. So whenever I see this sign I stay away from it. This sign warns you that there is a railroad crossing near the intersection. If you're making a turn at this intersection and you're crossing the railroad crossing just be aware that you have to look for the trains and make sure there are no trains on the track while you're making that turn and in a future video I will cover how to cross railroad crossings that are located near intersections because there's a lot to go over on that this is a divided highway railroad crossing warning sign this basically just warns you that there is a railroad in the middle of a divided highway. If you're turning left at this intersection, you'd have to cross the tracks first, and if you're turning right, then you'd have to uh, turn right before you cross the tracks. Sometimes these intersections have traffic lights which will turn red when the train is approaching it. Other times, it is also protected by a no left turn train sign which will light up when the train is approaching on any section of the intersection where you would be turning left in front of the tracks. I'll cover no left turn and no right turn train signals in a future video because there are so many different variations of them. This is the cross box sign. It merely marks where the railroad crossing is located. One thing you should be aware of when crossing unprotected railroad crossings is that there is no light, gate, or bell to warn you of the approaching train, only the train's horn. And that is why when approaching these crossings, you should have both your windows open so that you can listen for a train horn. And believe me, I know this from experience, with the windows closed, you cannot hear the train clearly. You have to have the windows open so that you can hear the horn. With the engine running and a bunch of other stuff going on inside the cab, you won't likely hear the horn. You should actually have your windows open when approaching any railroad crossing, but if you're driving a vehicle that's required to stop at railroad crossings, you're definitely required to have your windows open, and buses have to have their service door open as well. And while we're on the subject of buses, know that when stopping at a crossing, you have to actually secure the bus by applying the parking brake and the vehicle has to be in neutral as well. So many buses where I live, I've seen them stop the crossing without securing the bus. But that is something that you are required to do. And when after opening the door and the window, you have to look left and right. And if, the, if it's safe to cross the tracks, then first check the area in front of you to make sure you can get your vehicle all the way across and then proceed. Now, even if you're not driving a bus or a vehicle with hazmat, you should still make sure you can get all the way across the tracks before you try to cross it, or else you could end up stuck on the tracks like this truck right here. This guy is stuck because the intersection in front of the railroad crossing has a red traffic light and the line of cars in front of him is stopping him from getting all the way across. And sadly, he didn't get out of the way of the train in time, and he ended up getting hit. He also ended up getting pushed into the cars that were in front of him, which resulted in injuries. But luckily no one died, though it could have been a lot worse. So always make sure you can get all the way across the tracks before you attempt to cross them. And I'll cover these types of intersections later in a later video, because there's so many different types of intersections like this that you have to be aware of. It's a common misconception that trains always move slowly at unprotected railroad crossings. But as you can see in this video, which I also found on YouTube, this is a freight train traveling across an unprotected railroad crossing at high speed. There is no top speed at which trains are allowed to cross these types of crossings. 
There's no specific regulation stating that you have to slow down to a certain speed before crossing these types of crossings either. Freight locomotives, some of them are geared up to 80 miles per hour. So technically, if the track conditions allowed it, they could actually cross these railroad crossings at that speed, though they don't always travel that quickly. In fact, the top speed for most sections of the track is 60 miles per hour. Now, passenger trains, on the other hand, they can go much faster than freight trains. They often reach speeds of 80 miles per hour between stops, and some trains can actually reach speeds of up to 125 miles per hour if the track conditions allow. The fastest train in the United States, the Acela Express, can reach speeds of 150 miles per hour. Now, generally, if a high-speed train crosses a railroad crossing, the speed limit is usually slowed to 125 miles per hour. In any case, I counted how long it took this passenger train to reach this unprotected railroad crossing from the second it started blowing its horn, and it only took 11 seconds. So, if you're approaching a crossing and you hear a horn, you should probably stop, because I think it'll probably take you more than 11 seconds to get all the way across. So, in other words, if you're approaching a crossbuck railroad crossing that's unprotected, Open your windows and listen for a horn, and if you hear one, stop and wait for the train to pass before you proceed. By the way, if you're curious, this railroad crossing is located on Broadhead Road in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. This is the first railroad crossing I cross in a truck. Anyway, that's all I have for this video, and in the next video, I'll cover cantilever devices and other types of clearance issues you might have at railroad crossings. If a railroad crossing has more than one track, make sure there isn't a train approaching on the other track before you proceed.